the brain, our body's supercomputer. It maintains control over most of our body's functions, so it should be no surprise that the brain is vital for defending the body against the negative effects of type 2 diabetes. New research from the University of Texas Southwestern Medical Center has found a unique hormone that could possibly restrict cravings for sweets and alcohol. Our laboratory has recently discovered a hormone which has profound effects in terms of diabetes. So it has two general effects. One is to cause weight loss, and the second effect is to improve insulin sensitivity. This hormone that we study works by acting on the central nervous system, that is the brain. This interesting hormone may suppress your desire to eat sweet foods, and it also suppresses your desire to take in alcohol. If we could better control our need for sweet foods or alcohol, we could possibly put an end to the negative effects of type 2 diabetes, obesity, and alcoholism. This new research has grabbed the attention of the scientific community and has provided a new way to think about battling diabetes. We'll explore this groundbreaking study on this edition of Lab TV News Diabetes. Today, we are in the lab of Dr. Stephen Cleaver and Dr. David Mengelsdorf at the University of Texas Southwestern Medical Center. They are studying a hormone in the liver that could possibly reduce cravings for sweets and alcohol. The hormone is called FGF21. What it does is cause the fat tissue to suck up glucose. So you can imagine if you have type 2 diabetes, this is the perfect thing. So the glucose is then taken up into the fat tissue. But you don't want to get fat. You don't want to store this glucose. And so that's the remarkable thing about this hormone. So it also works at the level of the brain. And it activates the brain, a region called the hypothalamus, and it activates the nerves that extend to this fat tissue. And as a consequence, you get the efficient burning of the sugar. Dr. Cleaver's discovery has been years in the making. But why did he first get started in studying this hormone? We weren't initially working on type 2 diabetes. We were looking for new hormones that might have interesting biological effects. And one of the people in our group came across this particular hormone and we started following it. And this is one of the beauties of science and the type of science that we do is we follow the research wherever it takes us. I think the breakthrough happened when we discovered that in addition to these interesting physiologic effects that this hormone has came the finding that if you give it to an obese animal, it causes weight loss. The hormone fibroblast growth factor 21, or FGF21, is associated with environmental stress such as cold temperature exposure. It is also produced when we consume carbohydrates. So just how much of an effect does FGF21 have on the body? This is a graph, and what we're going to look at on this axis here is going to be a measure of thermogenesis or the burning of fat in an animal. And this is time and at this point in that treatment on day four is when we start them on a high fat diet. Now a normal animal will get obese very quickly when you put them on a high fat diet. So this is what a wild type animal, that is an animal that's not treated with FGF21 looks like. And you can see there's very little thermogenesis. They're not burning a lot of, of fat. So now when we give them FGF21, what do you see happen? You see a dramatic increase in burning, firing the body's ability to burn fat. And when you put them on a high fat diet, those animals that would normally get obese now do not become obese because you can see that that signal gets greatly increased. And that's dramatically inducing the activity of the body to burn off all that fat. Not only may it suppress uh, the desire to drink or eat alcohol and sugar in rich foods, but it also causes you to lose weight when you have consumed too much already, burn that fat off, and lower your glucose if you're a type 2 diabetic. Dr. Cleaver and Mangelsdorf's research could have a huge impact on diabetes and alcohol-related therapies. And that could change the way we eat or drink alcohol. So where do they plan to go from here? At this point, we're very interested in how exactly it's working on the brain. We're trying to narrow down where it's acting on the brain 
and then how it's communicating or promoting the communication between the brain and the fat tissue. We're looking for a specific regions in the brain where the hormone that we study works. And the staining that you're seeing there, that kind of bluish green color, that's a type of neuron or cell in the brain. And it shows that it's isolated to that specific region only of the brain. And if he zooms out, you can see the whole image of the brain. It's only in a very specific area that's important in regulating metabolism. And what Hanaro can do is he can take out those receptors and show that when those receptors are missing, we have a tool that can genetically go in and basically delete them. He can show that now we lose the response on, for example, uh, weight loss and its effects on diabetes. And now what we'd like to do is measure the response of those cells when you give the drug. And so he isolates those cells, he pulls out the molecules in them and he measures how many things go up and how many things go down. So he's actually quantitating or measuring the specific levels of uh, reactants to the hormone in the brain. As a hormone that responds to nutrients, one of the things we were interested in, does it affect the types of nutrients you eat? And indeed it does. And what we found is that it suppresses your desire to eat sweet foods like sugars. And it also suppresses your desire to take in alcohol. And that discovery has led to the idea that this interesting hormone may have effects on the reward centers in the brain, and that is what we're studying right now. The therapies they are developing could have an incredible impact, but how could the diabetes treatments that patients have been doing for years be affected by this? And could it be done in a way that would have just a small impact on our daily lives? People with type 2 diabetes are told to lose weight and to exercise more, and that's still, of course, a very good strategy. But in at least a subpopulation, that's not enough to overcome the type 2 diabetes. And so we need drugs, and we need drugs that are as minimally invasive as possible. And so we and other researchers are really pushing this in terms of trying to come up with uh, new strategies, new drugs for treating type 2 diabetes to augment the diet and the exercise. And this looks like a really good example. I think we've come across something that has all the right properties. And so now it's a matter of characterizing what it does, uh, making sure it's safe, and taking it into the clinic. Congratulations to Dr. Cleaver, Dr. Mengelsdorf, and their lab mates. Together, they are truly getting us much closer to making diabetes a disease of the past. We wish you continued success. Lab TV News Diabetes, going behind the scenes in labs across America to report on the latest peer-reviewed stories. To see more stories, please subscribe to our YouTube channel.